Hi, this is Eric White. This is the fifth screencast in a series of screencasts on getting started with OpenXML development. In the third and fourth screencasts, I discussed the various scenarios that you use OpenXML development for. In this screencast, and in the next one, I'm going to discuss some of the most valuable developer techniques that you can use when implementing OpenXML applications. In screencasts three and four, we saw that there are basically six varieties of scenarios. For word processing ML, the first and most important scenario is document generation. The second scenario is data and content extraction. The third interesting scenario is document transformation. For spreadsheet ML, the most important scenario is spreadsheet generation. And the next most important scenario is data extraction. For presentation ML, the main scenario is around PowerPoint generation. This isn't to say that there are not other scenarios that don't fit into one of these six categories. But 95% of all OpenXML applications fit into one of these six scenarios. In terms of the approaches that you can use to write these types of applications, the first and most accessible technique for writing these types of applications is document modification. Document modification uses a form of a document object model. So what does this mean? It means that you load all the XML into memory, you modify that XML, and you write it back out. With OpenXML in .NET, there are mainly three primary libraries that you will use for implementing an approach using document modification. The first is Link to XML. Link to XML, while it can be used in a pure functional approach, where you don't focus on modifying documents in memory, but instead focus on completely transforming and producing new XML trees from source XML trees. Its default approach is to use a document object model approach. You load all the XML, for instance, for the main document part into memory. You modify that main document part, and then you write it back out. As I mentioned, linked XML can be used for writing pure functional transformations, and I'll talk about that later. The second approach for doing document modification is using the OpenXML SDK v2.0. Document modification is what the OpenXML SDK version 2.0 was designed for. It has a strongly typed object model that makes it so that it's difficult to use the wrong element or attribute names. It makes it somewhat more difficult to create invalid documents. And of course, for those of you who are very familiar with it and don't see any reason to learn a new approach to modifying XML, there is XML document. Sometimes when doing OpenXML development, you don't need to modify documents or generate new documents. You might just be querying a document, retrieving data from it. There are two primary approaches to querying a document. The first is using linked XML, and the second is using the strongly typed object model of the OpenXML SDK v2.0. Over the years, I've created a number of examples that show how to use linked XML to query OpenXML documents. This blog post introduces the OpenXML document class that enables you to query an OpenXML document. If you are not familiar with using language integrated query, on my MSDN blog, I wrote a tutorial in query composition using functional programming techniques in C-sharp 3.0 the goal of this tutorial is to write a link query over an OpenXML document. So if you're not familiar with functional programming and link, then I recommend that you go through this tutorial. 
even if you intend to use the OpenXML SDK version 2.0 strongly typed object model instead of linked to XML, I recommend that you go through this tutorial. The concepts are applicable to both linked to XML and the OpenXML SDK v2. For more information on using the strongly typed object model of the OpenXML SDK v2.0, see this topic. When doing development using the OpenXML SDK version 2.0, one of the important tools that you will want to use is the code generation features of the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. You can download the productivity tool at this location. One of the approaches that I return to over and over again as I do OpenXML development is that of writing intermediate transforms. This means that I often transform the OpenXML markup as I find it in the document to some other form that makes it easier to accomplish the tasks that I'm going to accomplish. One interesting approach is to do what I call markup simplification. In the Power Tools for OpenXML project, there is a class called Markup Simplifier that can significantly simplify the markup for a word processing document. This class is focused just on word processing. For instance, here is the markup for a paragraph that contains a tract revision and a comment. You can see such things as this insert element that indicates text has been inserted. You can see the comment range start and the comment range end elements. If you run markup simplifier on this markup and you tell the markup simplifier that you want to accept tract revisions and remove comments, then after simplifying the markup, the markup for that paragraph will look like this. I used this approach when I was writing a fairly good fidelity transform from word processing ML to HTML. It's far easier to transform this to HTML than the markup up here. Along those lines, one of the most important simplifications of markup that you can do is to accept revisions. If you don't need to process all of the many elements and attributes that denote tracked revisions, then your job of processing that word processing ML markup is made significantly easier. So in many scenarios, the first thing that I do is to first accept tracked revisions and then do further processing of that markup. I was recently involved in a project where we had to display a reasonably good fidelity representation of an OpenXML document in a panel in an ASP.NET web application. And the first thing that I did is to accept tracked revisions so that I didn't have to deal with all of those elements and attributes that denote tracked revisions. Another approach that I've used to good effect in a couple of very interesting and somewhat difficult scenarios is that of transforming runs to single character runs. With both word processing ML and presentation ML, it's possible that the Office application will divide a particular string up into multiple runs. It may appear to not be for any good reason. So for instance, if you take a paragraph and you bold a character in the middle of the paragraph, that of course has to break that paragraph up into three runs. The first run is not bolded, the second run is bolded, and then the third run is not bolded. But if you then further unbold that character in the middle of the string, Word will not necessarily merge those runs together. You may see three different runs. Well, if you are looking for a particular string of text in a paragraph in either word processing ML or in presentation ML, one approach that you can use to good effect is that you first of all transform the contents of a paragraph 
into multiple runs where every single run has a single character in it. This then makes it much easier to find a string of runs that match whatever text that you are looking for. In the Power Tools for OpenXML project, there is a text replacer class that enables you to search and replace text in both a presentation document and in a word processing document. I introduced the text replacer class in this blog post on openxmldeveloper.org. There is a screencast in this blog post that walks through the whole process of splitting runs up into multiple runs, each with a single character in it. It also contains code to merge adjacent runs back into a single run if the runs have identical formatting. This means that at the end of this process of doing text replacement, the markup looks as you would expect it to. You don't see all of the runs, each with a single character in it, after this process has been completed. Another scenario where I use the same approach is the problem of merging comments from multiple OpenXML word processing documents into a single document. When you put a comment into a word processing document, Word will break the runs up in that paragraph where the comment starts and where the comment ends. So then if you are merging comments, this means if you don't do this process of breaking up runs into multiple runs, each with a single character, the logic for merging those runs becomes very difficult. Another approach that can be very powerful in certain scenarios is to first transform the XML in an OpenXML document into simpler XML for easier processing. For example, if you are writing a program to do full text search on many, many documents that are in some particular file share, it's easier to transform OpenXML word processing ML documents into simpler XML, then do the search for the strings that you're looking for. Some time ago, I wrote this blog post that shows how to implement a transform of word processing ML to simpler XML for the purpose of easier processing. When examining this document here, you very well might find markup that looks something like this. And then after doing the transform to simpler markup, which is easier to process, the markup might look something like this, where you have an attribute that lists the style name, the contents of the element contains the contents of the particular paragraph, and so forth. You can find this blog post here. The last important intermediate transform that I'm going to talk about is that of transforming an OpenXML document to flat OPC. You can then use XSLT or other tools that can process plain old XML and then transform that XML back to OPC. Let me show you a bit about how that works. Here we have a simple word processing document. It has a single paragraph in it. And as you know, that word processing document is a zip file and it contains multiple parts within that zip file. But if I come over here on the menu and I do File and Save As, and I tell it that instead of saving it as a Word document, I change it to a Word XML document and click Save. And then if I look at this test.xml in Visual Studio, first thing I'll do is I will format that XML. And then what we find is that that entire zip file has been changed to a single flat XML file with a single XML element as the root element. We can, for instance, find the main document part here, which contains the markup for that paragraph that was in that document. Key point about this is that when you are using a tool such as XSLT to do transformations, it's far easier to process a single XML document using XSLT than to 
write some kind of infrastructure to open up the zip file, extract the various parts of the zip file, transform those parts using XSLT, and then replace those parts back into the zip file. Here, you can find some blog posts about the flat OPC format. There is a blog post that describes the flat OPC format in some detail. There is a blog post that talks about transforming OpenXML documents to flat OPC format. It presents a small c -sharp function that will do that transformation. There's a blog post that transforms that flat OPC XML document to an OpenXML document. And there's a blog post that shows how to first transform an OpenXML document to flat OPC, transform the XML in the flat OPC to another form, and then transform the resulting XML back into an OpenXML document. The next programming technique that I'm going to talk about is a little bit esoteric, and this is not a technique for everyone. If you are one of the developers who can wrap your head around this approach, then you will have added a very powerful tool to your toolbox for dealing with OpenXML documents. This approach to doing pure functional transforms is particularly powerful when you are dealing with document-centric XML documents, such as OpenXML. Some time ago, I wrote this blog post on what a document-centric transform is, and I talked about what it means to do a document-centric transform using linked XML. In addition, I wrote a tutorial in the recursive approach to pure functional transformations of XML. In this blog post, I walk through in detail the linked XML semantics that I take advantage of to do these types of transforms. I use these types of transforms in a number of different places in the Power Tools for OpenXML. In particular, I use this approach for transforming word processing ML to HTML. I also use this approach in the code for accepting tracked revisions. The code to accept tracked revisions is a pretty interesting case study. I found it particularly convenient to not attempt to process every single aspect of tracked revisions all at once. Instead, I took it step by step. The code to accept tracked revisions does no less than seven successive transformations of the XML tree from one shape to another, to another, to another. And that made it far easier to write and to debug. And in fact, after everything was said and done, it performs really well. It accepts tracked revisions almost instantaneously as far as we are concerned in user interface time. In addition, I've done massive bulk processing using that code and it performs great. That's all I'm going to cover in this, the first of two parts on developer techniques. In the next part, I am going to cover six additional techniques that you will want to have as tools in your toolbox for effective OpenXML development.